What is the atomic weight of carbon? When you look at a periodic table, you can see that it's listed as 12.011 grams per mole, or that the average carbon atom weighs 12.011 atomic mass units. But if I were to take one carbon atom at random, would it weigh exactly that? Not all carbon atoms are the same. The type of element an atom is is determined by the number of protons it has, but the number of neutrons in an element may vary. For example, about 99% of carbon atoms, which always have 6 protons, have 6 additional neutrons, while the remaining 1% have 7 neutrons. All of these are called isotopes of carbon. By adding the number of protons and neutrons together, you get what is called the isotopic number. So the atom with 6 neutrons is a carbon-12 isotope, and the atom with 7 is carbon-13. A mass spectrometer is a type of instrument that can measure the exact mass of a molecule or atom and in turn can tell isotopes apart. It works by giving the atom or molecule a charge, typically a charge of 1, and applying electric and magnetic fields to it. How far the molecule is deflected in this field depends on its mass, and the mass spectrometer reports the mass as a ratio of mass to charge. Using a mass spectrometer, you would be able to tell the different isotopes of carbon apart from each other as different peaks in the spectrum. Molecules can also contain different isotopes. Since 1% of all carbon is carbon-13, a molecule with one carbon atom, such as methane, will also contain carbon-13 1% of the time. When two molecules are the same, but have different isotopic compositions, such as these, we call them isotopologues. You can tell isotopologues apart the same way you can tell apart isotopes, with a mass spectrometer. A water molecule with one oxygen-16 and two hydrogen-1 atoms, which are just protons with one electron, will display on the mass spectrometer with a unit mass to charge ratio of 18, while heavy water with an oxygen-16 and two hydrogen-2 or deuterium atoms will have a mass to charge ratio of 20. This form of heavy water is sometimes used in nuclear reactors to keep chain reactions going. A heavier isotopologue of water could also be composed of an oxygen-18 atom and two protons, which would also have a unit mass of 20. When identifying isotopologues like these, it helps to use a high-resolution mass spectrometer. Low-resolution unit mass spectrometers only provide whole numbers for the charge-to-mass ratio of atoms or molecules, while high-resolution spectrometers provide additional decimal places. This is helpful because two molecules with the same unit mass may have different compositions, like our two water molecules, and high-resolution mass spectrometry can help identify which is which. To calculate the exact mass of an isotopologue, we simply add up the exact masses of the specific isotopes in the molecule. In our example of heavy water, the water with two deuterium atoms has an exact mass of 20.014809677 atomic mass units. And the water with an oxygen-18 atom has an exact mass of 20.023118167.62 atomic mass units. On a high-resolution mass spectrum, you could identify which isotopologue is present. The relationship between isotopologues of water is useful in chemistry because it provides a way for chemists to look at past climate records. Heavier water takes more energy to evaporate, and therefore more of it will evaporate from the oceans when the temperature is higher. The water that evaporates travels in the sky to the poles where it falls as snow. Eventually, scientists collect the snow as ice cores and they can analyze the ratio of heavy to light water molecules to determine what the temperature must have been when the water in the ice evaporated from the oceans. Isotopic isomers, or isotopomers, are similar to isotopologues in that their connectivity is the same and their differences have to do with isotopes. Isotopomers are different from isotopologues in that while two isotopologues have different isotopic compositions and therefore different exact masses, isotopomers have the same isotopic composition but the isotope is in a different place. Isotopic isomers are also different from structural isomers which have a different arrangement of atoms. Isobutane, which is a structural isomer of straight-chain butane, is most commonly found with all carbon-12 and hydrogen-1 atoms. If both isomers have the same isotopic composition, it becomes difficult to distinguish them even in a high-resolution mass spectrum, because they have the same exact mass. Other peaks besides the highest peak for the molecular ion would have to be used to identify the molecule by inspecting the fragmentation pattern, which is the way that smaller pieces break off. Since all four carbon atoms have a 1% chance of 
being carbon-13, about 4% of isobutane molecules will be isotop logs of isobutane with one carbon-13. Three of these carbons are on the outside, so if a carbon-13 were in any of these positions, the molecule would look the same. There is also one central carbon which could be carbon-13, so there are two possible isotopomers of the isobutane with one carbon-13. In this example, butane and isobutane are structural isomers, the carbon-12 and carbon-13 atoms are isotopes of carbon, isobutane with carbon-12 and carbon-13 are isotopologues, and the two configurations of isobutane with carbon-13 are isotopic isomers, or isotopomers. All of these relationships are important in chemistry and can result in different physical and chemical properties of the molecules.